Hey, Ian Hamilton here. Uh, I'm the founder of Alka Way, and for the last 16 years, we've been working on helping people with their health through so-called alkaline water. But in the last three years, there's been an absolute revolution in understanding that it wasn't just the alkalinity of the water, but it was the molecular hydrogen infused into the water. Now. Things are really going fast now with the ways that you can get molecular hydrogen into, into your body and, and benefit from it. And what I've tried to do on this video is just to set down, I think we've got 11 different ways that you can access molecular hydrogen for yourself and your family. Uh, I've kept it simple and I've provided you with links to further information if you require. So, look, this is, this is the biggest thing that's actually happened to us in 16 years. Uh, the science is there, the results are there, and we are seeing it in our own lives. So I really encourage you to, to just spend that time and go through it. Uh, enjoy. At Alkaway, we stocked and supplied electronic water ionisers for 12 years. We introduced some of the world's biggest water ionizer companies to ionise water. And yet, Yes, we had wonderful results. We have a drawer full of stories of health changes from our clients, and we always thought it was the alkalinity of the water. Well, we're wrong, big time wrong. But let's leave that to later. I'm sure you want to know how to get your own hydrogen rich water because this is what this talk's about. It's about what we discovered that our ionizer, our alkalizer, did that really made the difference. So, if we're going to talk about that, we really need to talk about what makes molecular hydrogen different, special and worth learning about. Firstly, as a supplement, H2, we'll call it H2, leaves nothing in the body. It's the smallest molecule in the known universe and passes easily into the body, through the body and out of the body. Secondly, unlike any other form of antioxidant supplement, berry, vitamin, when molecular hydrogen meets a hydroxyl free radical in the body, it unites with it to create, guess what, H2O, water. Thirdly, unlike any other form of antioxidant, molecular hydrogen only neutralizes the nasty hydroxyl radical that leaves the good free radicals, those responsible for daily house cleaning, alone. Fourthly, unlike any other form of antioxidant, molecular hydrogen only creates water when it neutralizes a free radical. Many common and popular antioxidants actually create a new form of free radical when they dispose of the first free radical. For five, unlike most supplements that rely on dosage over a period, molecular hydrogen appears to be more effective in one dose of high strength. We've seen no side effects of this way of using H2, except in some cases of people with who've decided on repetitive high dosage, which increases bowel motions. Number six, although you can get many times higher dosage by inhaling H2, many studies indicate that taking up molecular hydrogen in water is more effective. Number seven, molecular hydrogen is an inert common gas. No one knows why it does what it does in over 700 scientific studies. And finally, number eight, it won't blow up. Hydrogen has to be mixed with oxygen to become explosive. That being said, when I lay in my bathtub blowing hydrogen into my bath water to see what happened, I shut the door and opened the window, just in case. Okay, so that gives you just the basics of H2. Let's get into the how. Right, the easiest, obvious way you would get hydrogen gas is to buy a cylinder of hydrogen. I did it. It seems simple. But in reality, it wasn't so simple. That's what I was using in the bath I talked about, which had no discernible health effect, by the way. There are problems. First, you need some sort of mask with a valve, and you need a regulator on the bottle. The problem is that H2 gas fittings have their own special way of attaching to cylinders, and gas suppliers start looking strangely at you when you ask for them. I mean, we're looking at something that makes a very, very big explosion in the wrong hands. I managed to buy a second-hand generator on eBay, but I couldn't get a face mask with a breathing valve for it that would fit. As a matter of fact, when my local gas bottle supplier refused to answer any more questions, I almost expected a visit from our terrorist squad. So, summarising, difficult to use, probably not as effective as drinking hydrogen-rich water. Okay, if, we, if it's better drinking hydrogen-rich water, we can bubble hydrogen gas into water. I did it. 
I'm not going to do it again. It seems the obvious alternative, just bubble H2 into a bottle. Again, I did have problems, and I was lucky I did it outside. The valve on my regulator released so much H2 at its low setting, it blasted the bottle of water straight out of my hand. But even assuming I managed this excess pressure problem, it still remains that in its big bubble form, the H2 preferred immediately to leave the water in the bottle than stick around. And even if I could get it to stay, all I could ever hope for was the maximum concentration possible at ground level air pressure, which is 1.6 parts per million, and that would begin to reduce immediately or stop the bubble machine. Number three, hydrogen gas into compressed water. Okay, now things are getting more interesting. There's a company in Japan that rents out its H2 units. You go into your gym, you put money in a slot or flash a card, and you screw on your water bottle. The machine has a hydrogen tank inside and a water tank. The machine infuses hydrogen into its tank under pressure. Now this is an important, very important point. By infusing hydrogen into a closed vessel under pressure, we can get a lot more hydrogen into the water. When we do that, the measure of concentration, the ppm or parts per million, can be two or three times that possible with an open vessel. More ppm, more effect. At least that's our experience over the last year or so. The Japanese company, by the way, doesn't return my emails. They rent their units out to gyms, etc., so they're probably so darn busy they can't be bothered exporting. But while the system isn't available here, I do think they must be getting good H2 concentration. Number four, electrolysis. We delivered and sold water ionizers for 12 years. They used an electrolysis chamber to create molecular hydrogen. The real crazy thing about it is that we didn't even know that was what was giving all the health benefits our customers told us about. Electrolysis separates the acid and alkaline ions in the water into two streams using electricity passing through the water. So you get two streams, one alkaline, one acid coming out of the machine. The acid runs down the sink, the alkaline you drink. So you can perhaps understand that when all the experts in the field, all the manufacturers, even doctors, said it was the alkalinity that gave the health benefits, well, it was easy for us to agree and tell others. But it wasn't. Well, it wasn't and it was. On our website, we have a meta-study of 100 separate scientific studies from around the world, all with the same basic conclusion, that drinking water high in alkaline minerals is healthier than not. So alkaline water is good for you. But it wasn't the alkaline water that was having the amazing health effects that our customers were reporting. Now, the first difficulty with the machines is that they're designed for water just over neutral, pH 7, for best operation. When they separate the input water, they end up with a concentration of acid minerals in the acid output and a concentration of alkaline minerals in the alkaline output. Now, why is that a problem? Well, vast areas of America, Europe, Australia and England have hard water water with high levels of calcium, the most common alkaline mineral. Using these devices in those areas means the already high calcium in the tap water is doubled in concentration in the alkaline output water. But wait, there's more. The calcium is in solution when it enters the machine, but as electrolysis occurs, the calcium changes from dissolved in solution to suspended, and its electrical charge changes make it sticky. So now we have high level sticky calcium. It sticks to the electrolysis plates in the chamber. It sticks to the outlet pipes. And it's a common sight to see water bottles people use for electrolyzed water with a hard inner coating of crystallized calcium. But let's assume that even though these machines have technical issues and require weekly cleaning, we're okay with that. The next problem is us drinking high level calcium ionized water with this sticky electrical charge. Calcium that our body can't take up and use is calcium that accretes in our arteries to combine with cholesterol and cre create plaque. It accretes in the kidneys and in the bladder and the prostate. So unless you have a dietary or supplement strategy to allow your body to take up this calcium, it's not necessarily a fact that more calcium is better. The next difficulty is that H2 production using these machines also is related to the pH of the water. In a nutshell, you can only get high H2 concentration with a high pH water. And if you drink high pH water, well, you may be visiting the little room of the house far more frequently. Vendors of these machines counter that you can add some lemon juice to the water to neutralize the high alkalinity without sacrificing the hydrogen level, which is true. 
and it would be a good idea if there were not better strategies that cost you far less. The final difficulty is, and this is hard to believe, the biggest manufacturers of these machines didn't even know about molecular hydrogen, so they didn't take it into account when designing the, the machines. So what we've found is that unless these machines are given a 20 minute cleanse, that's water passing through it without using it every two weeks or thereabout, they'll fast lose the ability to produce H2. This is because the plates in the electrolysis chamber must be absolutely clean to give away good H2 levels. And the cleaning regime designed into many of these machines did not even consider H2. They didn't know they had to and designed the units to still give high pH even if the plates were dirty. Yes, they suggested cleaning regimes, but they didn't connect the dots between hydrogen and cleaning. As far as they were concerned, they were giving high pH, so the machine was doing what they intended. Now, we know that high pH is not necessarily an indicator of high hydrogen levels. So we have literally thousands of people with these machines living in hard water regions, checking the pH of their output water and thinking all is well. They were never even told about hydrogen. And for this reason, we're seeing some giant changes in the industry. Some com companies embrace molecular hydrogen and some try to ignore it as if it never happened. The cost of these machines start around $1,500 up to $6,000. Annual running costs include filter changes, and that's about $250, plus the cost of the waste water every two weeks, plus the cost of sending it back to the vendor for a deep cleanse. Number five, natural hydrogen water. As I said earlier, my company invented the world's best natural hydrogen rich water filter. So what is it? How does it work? Well, it looks just like a water filter. Just connect it to the faucet or, the, or put it under sink, turn on the water and drink it. It has two sections inside the filter. First, the filtration section. After that, the hydrogen enriching media, which is a form of fuel magnesium in a slow release form. The water enters the unit from the tap, is purified by the filtration media, then passes up into the magnesium media. As soon as it hits the magnesium, it begins to react, creating molecular hydrogen. The hydrogen accumulates in the water within the filter, so that when you come and pour a glass, you get the highest possible concentration of H2 from that first glass. It's had time to cook, if you like. Obviously, if you keep on pouring glasses, the water inside will have less time in contact with the, with the uh, magnesium media, so you get less H2 levels. Wait an hour and the H2 will build up again. It's a very simple method and in lab tests with aquasciences it gave almost four times the H2 of a $4,000 electrolysis unit. Yes, four times. Now let's get that in perspective. Remember we want the highest possible con concentration for maximum effect in the body. Our limitation is that atmospheric pressure, that glass of high H2 water is going to start losing it immediately. So you need to drink it there and then or fill a glass bottle to the lip and close the bottle. And it can't get beyond 1.6 parts per million in normal atmospheric pressure. We have had even higher. We've had 1.2 parts per million from our ionizer, which is a full four times the hydrogen of the $4,000 electrolysis system. It's much less expensive, both in initial outlay and running costs. Finally, unlike the electrolysis system, it actually adds its own magnesium and calcium to your water, so it gives a true alkalinity to the water rather than the sticky calcium we turned, talked about earlier. Number six, pills. I met Mike in Anaheim at the huge natural products expo where we were exhibiting our UltraStream. He's Russian and a very strong personality. He came almost every day pestering me and telling me that our UltraStream was a waste of time because he could make a tablet that when he dropped it in water would do the same. It's pretty obvious he was learning all he could from me, but of course I was learning all I could from him. On the last day, I told him to go away and call me when he'd done what he claimed. Four months later, he, mailed, he emailed me. He'd done it. There are two forms of molecular hydrogen tablets on the market. One type is simply ingested, and the acid in our stomach reacts with it to create H2. The other form, Mike's form, is dropped into a bottle full of water, and the cap is immediately sealed. Because the bottle is sealed, the molecular hydrogen has nowhere to go. It's in a glass or steel bottle, so it can't easily dissipate, and it has some healthy acid in the tablet to accelerate the H2 reaction. I've seen concentrations of over three parts per million from this method, and we've found it's much more economical than the ingested tablets that seem to have a high dosage threshold before results can be seen. 
Jenny worked out for us as an alkaline specialist. She'd been an intensive care nurse and ruined her back making beds and lifting patients. Then she moved up here onto acreage and spent most of her weekend on a whippersnipper, twisting, twisting, twisting at the waist. By the time this time she had three swollen discs, couldn't sit down or lie flat. She was in tremendous pain and was actually contemplating spinal surgery, even though she knew the relief wouldn't last. So we started on one H2 tablet a day, no change. Two a day, nothing. Three day, three a day over the day, no change. But when she went to three tablets in one dose, suddenly the terrible pain was gone. So this appears to be a common thing with H2 oral tablets. You have to reach the right dosage before you see the effect. With the dissolved tablets, the threshold seems far less because the dissolved method gives a much higher concentration of H2. Of course, there are people who aren't as committed as us to getting results and prefer the easier method, which, message, method, which is just to take the tablets. They are still in that a pill fixes everything belief system. The pharmaceutical giants love these people. So both products cost around $60 retail. The ingestibles have 90 in a bottle. The dissolvables have 60 in a bottle. But we have observed that the ingestibles need a dosage of 3 times 3 or 9 tablets a day for severe cases. So at 9 tablets a day, a $60 bottle will last 10 days. When we use a dissolvable, we've seen similar results with just, two, with just 2 in a bottle once a day, which gives you a month of hydrogen for the same price. Number 7 photon exchange membrane. There are a couple of new products about, all from Korea, using a non-electrolysis method. They take a small amount of inlet water, sidetrack some of it, and pass it through a device called a photon exchange membrane, where it separates the H2 into hydrogen and oxygen, vents off the oxygen, and sends the hydrogen back into the input water. The technique certainly has advantages over the electrolysis system. Open up a PEM machine, and compared to an electrolysis machine, it's very, very simple. And it doesn't alter the pH of the water. That's the big difference. Also, it's not so dependent on the pH of the incoming water to work. Hydrogen levels on the system we've been testing for the last year range from 0.8 to 1 parts per million. Not earth-shattering, but respectable, especially compared to the test of the elect electrolysis system I talked about earlier. Not as good as the natural hydrogen water device or the device dissolved tablets. And they're selling at about between three and four thousand dollars. Okay, number eight, portable bottles. There's quite a flood of portable hydrogen water makers coming out of China and Korea. They incorporate an electrolysis device in the bottom of a bottle. You add water, switch it on, and in three minutes or thereabout, you have a bottle of H2 water at about 0.6 to 0.8 parts per million. Some from China are cheap, but they won't reveal what the electrolysis chamber is made of, which is worrying. Using the wrong metals can cause degradation of the heart muscle, so I won't use them. Better ones from Korea are around $300. Bear in mind you still need clean water and the effectiveness still depends on the mineral composition and pH of your local water. Jugs. We're now seeing a few electrolysis jugs. They really are large versions of the portable bottles. You fill the jug, turn it on and it creates H2 water using electrolysis. They retail for about $2,500. They need electricity and they don't filter the water. Okay, Brita style filters. There are filters you can drop into a Brita jug instead of a Brita filter. They claim to produce one parts per million, but I do have a problem with them. They'll be of a similar media to our own natural water ionizer in that they'll use magnesium, but the method doesn't really fit with hydrogen production. The, you fill the jug and the water dribbles through your hydrogen producing filter just like a Brita. All good so far, and let's assume that the filter does produce one parts per million as claimed. But here's my difficulty with it. The hydrogen water that, that drops into a large the hydrogen water then drops into the large surface area container, the jug, which seems perfectly designed to lose hydrogen, not retain it. Any open water surfaces uh, surface allows hydrogen to pass from the water to the air above. So of course it will do so. Meaning that within in minutes your jug full of hydrogen water is losing its hydrogen power fast. The sellers say it won't last, and that's obvious because when magnesium is allowed to dry out, it gets an oxide coating on it, preventing it working when it's returned to water. It's best left in water, and that it just isn't a way. That it, and that just isn't the way a Brita filter works. So I am sceptical. I think there will be method, better methods of the same, but they're not here yet. Number eleven, magnesium sticks. 
These have been around for years, and like the electrolysis units, the vendors never even realised they were capable of producing hydrogen. On our last trip to Japan, we met the manufacturer and, and inventor of what's probably the first advance in this product for a decade. However, problems still apply, and these are 1. Low hydrogen levels. 2. Problems of use. Every time you drink from a bottle, the magnesium stick will if you drink a bottle of H2 water, you have to immediately fill it to allow the molecular hydrogen to generate from the stick. And as we discussed earlier, it will also oxidise if you forget to fill the bottle and let it dry and all dry out. All in all, one of the lesser alternative ways. Last one, number 12, other ways. You could go on eBay and buy some rods of magnesium from China if the uh, customs have let it through, the, through into the country. You could add some malic acid and some boiling water, close the bottle, and you can get around the same as the best of the pills. But it is messy, and frankly, with the convenience of the pills, it's not my choice. It has been done, it does work, but we've posted a comprehensive comparison page on our website, so you can condense all this down to simple decisions. The molecular hydrogen niche is on fire right now, and I really encourage you to sign up to our Healthy Mail to keep up with news as it breaks.